فعاش القلب إخلاصا وصرت تحومك الطير تحلق في ثقافات وتنهل من روب الخير. Then there are others whom they fulfill their salah, yes. But as they are fulfilling, they begin to look at others and say, but why is this guy not at Fajr? By him being or not being at Fajr, is it going to validate or invalidate yours? Question. If he's really close to you or a family member or someone you'd like to address, do so in the most humble possible way, using the most wisdom possible or that you have in your bag. Allahu Akbar. Speak to them with beautiful words. Imagine Allah speaks about the kuffar and Allah says, وَلَا تُجَادِلُوا أَهْلَ الْكِتَابِ إِلَّا بِالَّتِي هِيَ أَحْسَنُ Do not debate with the people of the book, except with that which is the best, the best words. How you talk to the, those non-believers, make sure that the best words are chosen. When Allah tells Musa alayhi salam to go to the Pharaoh, He says, use soft words. What about us? We speak about others who are Muslimin, who have already uttered the shahada, but because one or two issues they have or we have with them, we start speaking to them harshly or about them harshly. May Allah protect us. Even if we are reading salah five times a day, we're donating that salah away. The worst thing you could do is to sweat to do good deeds and then find there are no good deeds written next to your name on the day of judgment. Why? Because the tongue couldn't stop wagging. And it wagged and wagged in the wrong direction. What did it do? It spoke about everyone and anyone. Just that backbiting made you lose everything. If you want to worry about others, worry about them in, the, in a positive way. That's what it is. You're really concerned about others? Give them hope, encourage them. Give them a gentle reminder. Show them the goodness they are in. Perhaps nowadays I find that that is much more encouraging than just blasting them and making them feel doomed. And you know, they go out thinking, eh, I can already feel the heat of Jahannam. You know, they're walking home in such a way that they're holding their bellies out as though the fire is chasing them from behind. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us. That, that is an approach. But I found that, you know what? It is only workable with those who've already got to a certain point. And then they start worrying about the fire. But if you start with young people, they will start thinking, depending on who they are, obviously, there is always a position, a place to say things in a certain way. Wherever you are, you need to look at who you're talking to. That is what will determine how you talk to them and what you say to them, with which words, what you choose. You know, if my son is very close to me, I can tell him things that I cannot tell the sons of others. But today we will swear the sons of others and we won't swear our own. I'm not saying we're supposed to be swearing our own, but... We are exemplary. The minute the child comes, someone else's child, we quick to blame them. And we don't realize, hey, hang on, maybe my own son is telling a lie. My son, no ways, can never, ever lie. Never. Why? Because he's my son. Wallahi, it's a fact. This is what people think, and this is shaitan coming to you. You have to consider the fact that perhaps this little child is pulling my legs. Perhaps. Allah forgive us. So I was saying some people fulfill their salah, but it makes them despise others who do not. We should be concerned. How many times have you cried in salah for those who are not reading their salah from your own family? How many times? Oh Allah, help my child to get up for this prayer. Help my husband or my wife to get up or to do something correctly. Cry for five years, ten years. See what will happen. You think Allah will not respond that call? That is quite a basic, simple dua to Allah. And it is so genuine and sincere. More sincere than if you were asking for a Ferrari. Because you know what? Ferrari is something material. You say, oh Allah, give me this. And you know deep down that ah, if I get it, don't get it. It's one of those things. For you to be able to ask for something religious, for someone who's connected to you or even not so connected to you, it has to come from the bottom of your heart. It has to. You have to be genuinely concerned. Oh Allah, help them, guide them, help them to dress appropriately. Ya Allah, the other day I heard this and that. With Allah, there is no riba, which means you tell Allah whatever you want. He knows already. You say, Ya Allah, I heard this, you know, this happening. Someone was blasting the beat and doing this and doing. Ya Allah, guide them, guide me. Protect me, guide them too, Ya Allah. Make dua once, twice, ten times for them. Shed a tear or two. Wallahi, they may not know that it's through your dua that they achieved guidance. And what do you get in return? You get the, the prayer of the angels. Allahu Akbar. Whereas on the other hand, some people, as they are becoming physically or outwardly, should I say, pious, those, that holiness actually translates as holy, as in holes. 
Not holy as in pious. Because to be honest, it's a hole. Through which if you fall, you end up in the pit of hell. Let's not do that. Let's encourage others.